There's plenty of room for you here, buddy. Hello, everybody. So I wanted to go live uh, ASAP here because you guys have been waiting. And now I, I have to put in my DoorDash order here for lunch real quick. But um, yes, today we are going to be talking uh, about the cruises, about uh, Surrey Cruise in particular. She's 18 now. Please hold this light is blinding back. that on for me look the big one there we go now i'm lit all right um and i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to reach out via the internet um to surrey specifically to give her some hope give her some sage words and uh, a little bit of a cautionary tale. So um, bear with me here. Why are these choices so dumb? Let's see here. Um, I guess that's just what I'm getting. Okay. Oh, I see. I'm ordering pokey, guys, and this is like so weird on this app and then i want that no no okay there you go love all right so gonna have some pokey here pretty soon i'm stoked so let's get started here and let's rewind the clock first okay to <clears throat> a time period that we will all fondly remember and um, let's let's get this whole story in perspective, okay? Um, and hello to everybody out there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, thank you for being members. Thank you for just being here, period. Uh, I do appreciate it a, a lot, a lot, a lot of it. So let me see if my iPad is going to cooperate here as my second screen. I don't know, but we'll see here. It wasn't earlier and it's still not. So what would it be if I didn't have a technical glitch, guys? It wouldn't be a live stream by me. So I am going to put my second screen up onto the television here and we'll work with that. Also, if you guys haven't started listening to Taylor Swift's new album, um, please do, please do. My new theme song is currently, uh, who's afraid of little old me. You may have seen me do a post about that. So, yeah. So what I want to do is just move. Yeah. I'm going to move me over to here. And now I can see all y'all and the stuff I'm talking about here. All right. So we're going to go. Back to the beginning. Okay. And here we go. So I want to transport us back in time, back to the year of our Lord, 2005. And it was a simpler time. We're talking now uh, 18 years ago. And, uh, you know, it was a it was a different time, you know. Uh, yeah, my my oldest was one, um, and uh, yeah, actually hadn't turned one yet. He was still like six months old. And what happened in April two thousand five? That's when Tom and Katie start dating, and the world lit a blaze, just completely bonker doodles. Because Tom and Katie, it's true love, right? Just so Princess Bride. Love, true love, right? Um, and, uh, you know, they went out. They were, you know, uh, spotted everywhere. I mean, it was like as if he had to be like, I'm with her. She's with me. 
Okay. And how did they make this public? What actually happened? We all know. Here it comes. Are we ready? King Tom, we've never seen you behave this way before. I know. Have you ever felt this way before? <laughs> it was the couch jump, guys. It was the couch jump. And then Katie was waiting backstage. Oh, we're up. this is the whole episode. Um, you know, and then Katie had been backstage and they hadn't even, you know, uh, like announced it and he made her come out. So let's look at that here. We'll just look at the whole bit. Thanks for coming to my Legends Ball with Katie. Was that the best fun? Was that? Yes, yes. What has happened to you? <laughs> Like, I, I want to say something. As as somebody who is uh, desperately in love with my spouse, I, I have never uh, jumped up. It, it's probably more like if you guys saw on, on Instagrams today, Jennifer Garner got a call from her hero, uh, Julie Andrews, and she was like, oh, my God, like coming out of her skin. That's kind of more the real reaction when you're so excited and can't speak about, I don't know what this, what was happening here. Um, it was a lot of, yeah, let's, let's, let's continue here. Let's continue. Something happened to you. Something happened to you. I'm in love. <laughs> They're literally on the edge of their seats. Like, <laughs> All the women are like, oh, no. <laughs> no, I know what he's doing. He's processing. He's, trying, okay. to, he's <laughs> trying to figure out what he is going to tell, what he isn't going to tell. I've never seen you like that. Yeah, this is just a montage. I know. We've never seen you behave this way before. I know. Have oh, you here it comes. And he's like, sticks his tongue into his bottom of his... Like, like he's doing a monkey face. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you're pretending to be like a monkey, you know, and you do that and. I'm not going to pretend. <laughs> I can see you're not. You know, Katie once told Seventeen Magazine. Yes. He did that again. I forgot that he did it twice during the interview. Like Oprah's talking and then he just jumps up on the couch. Oprah has lost complete control of this interview at this point. She doesn't even know what's happening. Look at her face. She has no control of this interview whatsoever. And she's just giving into it. She can't, There's nothing else she can do. It's Tom Cruise. It, it's still going to work because Tom Cruise, right? Okay, so we'll get off the couch jump. Then what happened next? Uh-oh, it's a wedding in Italy, the dream wedding. And what else happened at this time, guys? What else happened? They, they were at a castle, guys, at a castle. What else happened? Well, we know this was the famous incident that got Leah Remini kicked out of Scientology because at this wedding, she noticed that David Miscavige was dancing with his side piece and not his wife and was like, where's Shelly? And Tommy Davis <clears throat> told her, you don't have the effing rank to ask that question. And Leah was like, hold my earrings. Hold all the earrings. Okay. And, and we know what happened next from there. She wrote a book. She's been working hard. There's a television series. The whole nine. She's got a court case. All right. Then. Oh, I just, that's an extra tab. I apologize. And then what happened next uh oh oh uh oh hot dog well first before this there was of course the whole national campaign does everybody remember the hashtag run katie run yeah for years hashtag run katie run was uh, trending on every social media so you know they always like to now this was uh back in 2012 when she calculated this Surrey was six 
Suri was six years old. I want everybody to get that into their brain that she was six. Not you, Siri. I'm not talking about you. Um, she was six when this happened. Now, when we say no more kids in Scientology, and we are so adamant against that, I want to make sure we all understand that even Katie Holmes, a famous Hollywood actress of television and the silver screen, had to calculate the escape. I'm going to take out my headphones because I don't need them anymore. The escape of her and her daughter from Scientology in a way that could only be characterized, guys, as completely cloak and dagger. Okay? Because she knew, because it was being told to her, it was being pushed on her by her assigned friend, Jessica Feshback. Okay? Because this is the daughter of David Miscavige's bestie. Okay? So let's let's not let's not get it twisted here. There was a 0% chance that she wasn't going to start receiving intensive training, intensive auditing, intensive grooming to take a seat at the supreme table of Scientology. Okay? So Katie realized, I'm not safe. My kid's not safe. Now, in the history of Scientology that I personally experienced, I've only seen two other people choose their children over Scientology. One is my mother. The other, while I was in the Sea Org during my first year, there was a woman, and I, I was thinking about this today in preparation for this live, and I cannot remember her name, and it aggravates me. But her son who had been born into the cadet org in, in California, not in Florida, not at the int ranch, but down at the regular ranch. He got into, you know, teenage mischief and he wouldn't join the Sea Org. So he was considered a suppressive person. The church declared a 15 year old, a suppressive person. And they were booting him out of every Scientology building where he was sleeping, everything. And they told her, you have to disconnect from your son. Now, this is a woman who signed a billionaire contract. She joined the Sea Org back when Elrond was still alive. She worked with him personally at one point. Okay. And <clears throat> she made the excruciating decision at that time to also get declared and choose her son so that he wasn't on the streets. Okay, if you ask anybody who is my age, slightly older, about the pack rats, um, the kids, the teens that were busted out of the Sea Org, busted out of their Sea Org birthing, and were essentially homeless, just couch surfing. At one point, they all got apartments together, just like existing around those big blue buildings in the 90s during the heyday that some people like to talk about, the highest influx of Scientologists. You know I'm talking about, Mitch. Most of the kids that were seen around there were now homeless ex-Sea Org members, ex-cadets, because they had nowhere to go. So they would just hang around and kind of like get things from people in scraps and like, you know, a buck from their parents if they had it and go to the, you know, the little canteen place across the street and get some snacks and shit, okay? So Katie, Katie Holmes, along with her father, who's also a, a divorce attorney, planned out getting her money walled off in separate accounts, buying an apartment in his name, giving her burner phones because all of her phones, everything was being monitored, guys. Every call she made, monitored. Every email she sent, monitored. The only time she was allowed alone time away from Jessica Fetchback, away from the rest of her housekeeping staff who were all Sea Org members, all reporting on her 24 hours a day, seven days a week, was when she would take Surrey to go visit grandpa and grandma, her parents. Okay. Because then it would be like, oh, I'm good. I'm just going to go, you know, we're going to go to the park and go to an outing. 
They plan this in the swing set time at parks. Burner, for, I mean, this is like literally uh, cloak and dagger shit. And then to keep up appearances and to make things just so that he couldn't do anything about it. Okay. She flew to Iceland to see him on a set of a movie, uh, Oblivion. Was like, oh, and photos were taken of them together, you know, canoodling and, oh, everything's good in Cruiseville and he's in the da 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 da, -da. She flew back. <clears throat> went to her new apartment, right? Got in a different car than her normal driver. She was like, oh, I'm going to go to my dad's. It's okay. I got a different car. I didn't realize you were going to be here. Whatever. Got in a new car, went to her brand new apartment, and just filed for divorce. Had him served while he's in fucking Iceland and she's here. When there was 0% chance of him doing anything. She was in a safe place that was not controlled by Scientology in any way, shape, or form. Her child was now safe. And then, of course, they went through a whole contentious divorce. But <clears throat> what did Tom decide to do as a result of this? He, because Katie's stipulation in, in the divorce was that there will be no Scientology for Surrey. Zero. I will control where she goes to school. I will control uh, any religious, uh, you know, indoctrination. Zero percent will be Scientology. So Tom decided, because I'm sure Davey Miscavige decided, that his six-year-old daughter was suppressive. And he cut her off completely. To look in the eyes of a six-year-old who, you know, like, let's face it, it's definitely their kid. There's 0% doubt that that is a combination of, of Katie and Tom. And to decide that your baby is a suppressive that you can no longer be around that is going to damage you as your Tom Cruise. I want everybody to get this in their mind here from it. we got to really put ourselves in the mindset because outside of Tom Cruise, you know, and a few other people that are that big megastars, Michael Jackson, Oprah, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, you know, uh, the Pope, uh, you know, uh, One Direction, uh, you know, the K-pop bands. Outside of those phenomenons, there are not, Leonardo DiCaprio, there are not that many people in the world that are known worldwide for, you know, just if they walk into a room, people are going to lose their shit worldwide, okay? Whether it's correct or not, that's just the effect they have, right? Tom Cruise is one of those people. But he decided that out of the billions people, billions, what are we at? Almost 8 billion people now on earth that could harm him in some way, that could actually bring him down, take out his career, ruin his life, stop him from being Tom Cruise. That was his, his six-year-old daughter. I, I, I want to know what crimes the six-year-old committed. Did she not go to bed on time? Did she have an opinion? Uh, did she have like, you know, issues with potty training when she was little. I mean, like, what are the things? Oh, and Prince, thank you. Um, what are the things that would be a, a crime that a six-year-old could do? Like, I don't, I, I don't understand, right? So that was the choice that he made. He hasn't seen her. Um, at all, I, I think in, in since the divorce, he's seen her less than five times. But I, if I'm wrong, please correct me. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's I don't understand that as a parent. I you know my kids drive me up the wall. They're teens, right? But there's a zero percent chance that I'm going to look at them and think you're the most evil 
on the entire planet in this universe. And there's no way I can associate with you because you are death and destruction only. You have no good inside you. You have nothing to bring to the table that is help or love or anything. It's just <clears throat> insane. So, yeah. Uh, I, I see that people are asking if it might have been the divorce stipulations. Their divorce is sealed, so nobody's going to see what was in the divorce stipulations um, for sure, unless Katie ever talks about it. But I think that's part of it, is that neither of them talk about Fetch. Um, however, as someone who's gone through divorce, as someone who's a child of divorce, if your parent wants to see you, they fucking come see you. There's a reason Tom Cruise didn't go see Surrey. It's not like he can't pay for a high-powered attorney, guys. It's not like he's going broke, okay, to get visitation time. It's because he chose not to go and be in contact with his daughter because he practiced the Scientological but you know, uh, practice of uh, disconnection with her. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm so wheezy today. I got to do my inhaler later. So what I would say here um, is this. I, I want to get to my message to Surrey, but I'm seeing a lot of comments. I'm just going to go through and star these real quick because I want to make sure I get to them after. And then we're going to talk directly to Surrey here for a second. I hope she sees it. I hope Katie sees it. I've said many, many times that I think that Katie Holmes is um, amazing, 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 amazing. And what she did for her daughter is the blueprint for how people should get out and um, it does take a village. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm almost down at the bottom. Do, 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 do. All right. So for those of you who are new here, sorry, that was a really long pause. For those of you who are new here um, and don't know my whole story, we're going to we're going to take a time travel back in my life real quick. Um, my mom got into Scientology in 1970. My dad got in shortly after that because he was still in Vietnam and uh, his bestie who he was in Vietnam with in Lodi got him in, in the Northern California kind of like missions that were like a big deal back in the seventies. And so my dad became this like groovy, super cool auditor guy. And my mom started auditing and was working for San Francisco org and then started working for the guardian's office and, um, you know, doing, uh, naughty things for them in the seventies. And my dad was considered in my mom's words, a pretty boy. And, um, she thought, oh, he's just another pretty face. I'm not going to go for that. And her boss kept saying, you like that. You like that con Sova guy, don't you? And she was like, no, he's gross. And then finally one day she's like, mm, maybe I do. And, um, <clears throat> what of it, you know? And, uh, so he asked her out, you know, bought her a pack of cigarettes because that was like the most romantic thing that you could do in the seventies is buy some lady a full pack of cigarettes, right? Uh, I mean, when you're making like nothing per week, that's a lot of money. He, he, he laid down some, some cheddar to show her like, I got the goods. They got married, um, in 1975 on a ferry boat in San Francisco, uh, with just like the org staff there. Her parents weren't there. His parents weren't there. 
And then a year later, I was born. So much excite, right? And um, I'll just show you guys. This, this is my daddy. That's my daddy and me. When I was a little baby, um, I was like seven there in that picture. Um, and this is actually right before they got divorced. So um, my dad, around this time, actually shortly after this picture, this little photo shoot was done here with us, um, got into a horrific car wreck. Uh, it was a single car. He was drunk. He fell asleep at the wheel and crashed into the center divide um, in Northern California there. And um, had a few hundred stitches all over his face and his back. He almost broke his back and almost died. And um, it uh, was very traumatizing. And then after that, you know, knowing what I know now about medical stuff, he probably suffered a traumatic brain injury. And um, uh, because of that, he became unnaturally obsessed with like getting rich, right? And so he was making really good money as a house painter for like rich people's houses in Northern California. And, um, but that wasn't good enough for him because he didn't have all the things that were at these fancy houses. Right. But he was making good money. So he decided to, you know, like double our money overnight and took all of the money that they had saved up. They were finally out of debt and he invested in a gold mine in Arizona. Now, for those of you who are not up and up on the gold mine thing. There's no gold in Arizona in them Thar Hills. Um, so my mom, you know, was trying to like moonstruck him into reality and said, you know, I want a divorce. And she thought he would, you know, beg to stay. And instead he was like, well, when do you want me out of the house? So they separated. He immediately shacked up with someone else. Didn't try to get my mom back. It was a whole messy thing. Why do I know all this as like a seven-year-old? Um, because it was the 80s, guys. And um, this is part of why I'm in massive amounts of therapy. Um, neither of my parents acted very adult during this time period. At the age of seven, I became essentially a full-grown adult because of this um, scenario. Anyway, let's fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> so... Uh, my parents are both remarried. And as soon as my mom got remarried, that's when my dad decided that we were safe. We were, we were safe now. Oh, I'm going to talk about that comment later. I was trying to start. And um, so he moved to LA with his new wife, leaving us in Northern California, where we were seeing him every other weekend. Now we would only see him maybe once a year when he was available to fly us down and he dove straight back into Scientology. There was a little like respite from Scientology in my life while, while my parents left because of me. The first time in my life, my mom chose me. I was a baby. They tried to say I was an SP as a baby because my mom had finished her contract in those days. You know, you sign a five-year contract. My mom's contract was up. She didn't want to sign a new one. She had just had me. Um, and she also wasn't in agreement with a lot of the things that were going on inside Scientology, inside the inner workings of Scientology, not the tech itself. She never really gave up on that until many years later. Um, and so she, you know, we moved to Lodi, my sister was born and, you know, we kind of had this like Scientology free existence for a little bit until my dad moved to LA and dove back in head first. So then every visit I had with him was Scientological. He would put me in a Scientology school for the summer, or he would take me around to all of the orgs there in the big blue buildings, even as a 10 year old and bring me to recruitment sessions. This is my daughter, Nora. Here's her skills. Here's, what can you tell her about, you know, uh, the Commodore's messenger org? What can you tell her about AO, you know, and make me volunteer in these places. And so I knew from a very early age what was important to him. It wasn't me as a human being. It was what my status would become, how I would be reflected in the eyes of Scientology, how I would 
what what level would I get to? Would I be? He wanted me to be a class twelve auditor, and you know, uh, a a captain, in, like like Davy Miscavige in the fake Space Navy. So, I think it's just really sad that at one point when I was fourteen, and we had moved, uh, my mom, my mom had moved us from Eureka back down to Santa Rosa to the Bay area. Uh, that's a whole other story. Eureka was just like, it did not fit for us. Um, my dad went off the radar for almost two years. No one knew where he was. Not a phone call, not an email, not a nothing. Um, and you have to realize guys, this is again, the nineties. Now we're in the nineties. There's no cell phones. I didn't even have my first pager yet. I had no, his own mother didn't know where he was. He popped back up like nothing happened. Hey, NBS, how was it going? You know, like what in the fuck? What? So, and, and then the, you know, routine started up again. We'd go down. He pimped me out to recruiters and on and on and on. So when I turned 18, he decided that I wasn't really being Scientology enough. So I had a great job lined up in Sonoma. I was thinking of going to a uh, community, you know, junior college to start on what I wanted to do in life was be the first female sportscaster, right? I mean, there were other ones, but I wanted to be like a big time sportscaster because there was like no women doing it really at that time. And <clears throat> I went down for a visit. He took me over to the school where his wife was teaching and they recruited me for a week straight. Now I'm 18 years old. I've just graduated high school and they are telling me how I can teach these children and it's going to be great. And I am, I'm so, I'm overqualified to do this guys. I have done no college. I have done no, like I graduated high school guys. That was my only qualification. And so I saw how excited my dad would be for me to be there. We talked about getting a place together, you know, and I would be able to live like a real adult life. And so I chose that path because I'm an American girl with daddy issues. What can I say? Um, and then, um, Yeah, we did have pagers in the 80s, Martha. I just didn't have one yet. I got my first pager in high school because they were really expensive and like only doctors and stuff had them. So, yeah. Um, so I moved to LA. First, I had my own place. Then my dad and I split rent on a townhome in Tarzana. And then I got recruited for the Sea Org. As soon as I started doing courses at Celebrity Center, nonstop, every day. And finally, in January of 1995, I said yes. I was 18. I joined the Sea Org, left the school. That was a whole thing. They were extremely upset. My dad was over the moon. This was like the proudest moment of his life. And every time we talked, he wanted to know how the Sea Org was. And how I was doing. And so no matter how bad things were, I never told him. I tried to leave early on. I, but I couldn't because I thought, how disappointed is that man going to be? Like the only thing I've ever done that he's considered great is doing this stuff in Scientology. I mean, he almost didn't come to my high school graduation, guys. I was this close to never talking to him again. And I told him, if you don't show up for my high school graduation, we are done. Like, but he showed up. He showed up. And then in October of 1995, just before my sister's birthday, she was turning 16. He died suddenly of a heart attack. And 
all of the questions and things and everything that has happened from that point forward have left me so empty because I've never gotten to say all of the things that I wanted to say to him and show him all the things that I could do that have nothing to do with that. But at every turn of my life, every major milestone from the time I was 10 on, my dad missed out on. He was not there when I had my first kiss. He was not there when I went to my first dance. He was not there when I had my first heartbreak or my period for the first time, or I turned 16, or anything that was important. Why? Because he was very busy doing Scientology. It was the most important thing that could happen. It was the only thing that was important. He couldn't even pay child support to my mom. And then I had to feel guilty about that for just existing, you know. So I know, I can't say I exactly know what it feels like to be Surrey Cruz, but I know a lot about it. And at least <laughs> my dad had the courtesy of not being famous worldwide and the whole world watching him do this to me. I got to just be alone in that complete devastation and hide it behind happy faces and humor and other things. So What I want to say to Suri is that now that she's 18, and frankly, I don't consider anybody who's 18 to be a full grown adult because I have an 18 year old and that's so far stretch, but you're a legal adult now. I had to get my Kleenex, guys. Sorry, I'm crying all over the place here. And the other good news for her is that her dad is still alive. I would hope that Suri can understand the super hard choice that her mom made to take her from that to to literally save her. From. From the evil. Of Scientology. From the darkness that has consumed the humans that are there to know that her daughter's life was going to be just it was a real life or death situation guys it's it's true and Katie saw that and she got her out of there and didn't let her grow up in that environment in any way, shape, or form. And I know that she grew up without Tom, which is hard and horrible and horrific. But the truth is she was going to grow up without him anyway. Because 
nothing would have been more important to him and nothing is more important to him than Scientology. Surrey was going to be a loser either way. And I'm, as a mom, as just a human, I'm so proud of Katie Holmes from having that strength and the foresight to, to do that. You know, and if one day Tom, you know, breaks free of the cult mindset that he's in and starts to try and make amends for that. I hope that she's open to it. I hope that that happens despite all of the things that have happened. If, if I could see, you know, my dad one more time now, that would be amazing. And it just, it, it breaks my heart that like he's right there and he doesn't, he doesn't go to her and he doesn't, that he doesn't see that there's nothing, there's nothing more important than being there for your kids for all of these things. It just, I really, really hope that you know, he, that all the people inside there, like, get it. And they start, you know, um, understanding because now that she's 18, it, it, and I saw this, it, the, you know, yes, Katie didn't execute that escape to not prepare Surrey for Scientology to try to come for her. I, I'm sure she has. I'm sure she has prepared her. Because now that she's 18, it's fair game. It's it's game on. And there's nothing that's stopping the Scientology machine <clears throat> not only to come for her and try and recruit her, but also to try and slander her everywhere. Just like they do to anybody who speaks out because you have to realize Suri is a declared SP. Hmm? No, not you, Siri. Oh, my iPad's trying to talk to me. Yeah. You know, it's just, I, I fear that that would be the absolute dumbest thing they could do. A hundred percent. Can you imagine the ad campaigns that they try and start, the whisper campaigns, the psychological warfare that they attempt to wage on her. Did they not learn from Katie doing essentially the greatest escape of all time publicly that if they fuck with Surrey, they're going to find out. So, Surrey Cruz, if you ever see this, all I can say is, you're not your dad. You're not responsible for his choices. You are a good person. And your life is just fine without him. And if you ever do choose to include him in your life, set really good boundaries. Do not think you have to save him because you don't. You don't have any obligation to him whatsoever. Just as he decided to have no relationship with you. So try and just be yourself and don't ever, ever doubt that your mom is, will go down in history as one of the greatest moms of all time. So just keep that in mind. If you're, you know, get told things, people try to manipulate it and twist it and make you think bad things about your mom, you know, 
we all thought bad things about our mom growing up was fine. That's normal. But you know what I mean. Just know. She did absolutely everything to save you. So let me get to these starred comments here, guys, because I'm getting super verklempt. All right. I've been that way this whole time. Asen, Nora, my dear, sometimes it is better for kids to not have any contact with a narcissist father. I can confirm that for my own kids. They are really better off. Mm. This is very true. Like Tom would need so much therapy. So much therapy. But that's not that's not for Surrey to do. That's he needs to do that. But yeah. Clearwater, Eric in Pennsylvania, Erie PA. Clearwater, Erie PA. Sorry. So wait, they had sex before marriage? No RPF for Tom? Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, we can all do the math there. She got pregnant before they got married. The same thing happened with me. I was pregnant with my oldest before I got married. I didn't really care. We were going to get married later. And my mom, you know, had a whole fit. No grandchild of mine is being born out of wedlock. That was her quote. Lori Washburn. Question, why did Katie bother to visit Tom in Iceland? That was for appearances. It was like, so everything was normal because she used to always visit him on the sets of his movies, right? He just happened to be in Iceland then, you know? She probably wanted to confirm from him directly how long he's going to be there, you know? I mean, all this is a timed thing, but it was all keeping up appearances with the Joneses until, you know, she pulled the trigger on the, the whole operation. Uh, Donna. Oh, I gotta make this bigger. I can't see. What does it say? Oh, there we go. Donna Zoint became a YouTube member. Thank you so much. Uh, better for having visited this place. Can Katie speak out now, or could she always choose not to? She can always choose not to. I mean, she could speak out now. It's uh, their kid's 18. I don't know what the statute of limitations is on on that, on her, you know, cone of silence on this. I, I would really love for Katie to write a book about it. I'll be first in line to buy that. I'll tell you that. Acupunk, you totes look like Punky Brewster in this pic. Thank you. <laughs> uh, cooler by the lake. Question, now that Surrey is 18, do you think Katie will start to speak out? I, I hope so. I hope so. I really, really do. Uh, Brittany Van Brakel, I couldn't be happier about you doing more lives. Thank you. And thank you for your super chat and for being a member. Also, thank you, Cooler by the Lake, for being a member. Uh, Sharon T, comment, Katie Holmes' escape was brilliant. So glad she saved Surrey from the cult, uh, et cetera. I wonder now that Surrey is turning 18 if she will ask her mother all the questions about the escape. I hope so. I hope she knows all about it already, you know? And it's not this like, okay, well, now that you're 18, I'm going to tell you a little story. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's good parenting. I'm sure their relationship is really good. And I'm sure that she's had to answer throughout Surrey's life. Why doesn't dad want to talk to me? So I'm pretty sure Surrey knows what's up. Um, help from above. Question. I'm sure Katie was very protected from seeing the abuses of Scientology. So what must she have seen to make her run? This is a great question. So, yes, she was shielded from any nonsense. This is, yes, I'll give you that. However, because she was married to Tom Cruise, what she did discover is that she was a prisoner in her own home. Her look was being controlled by Tom and David Miscavige. Her every step was being watched by Scientologists that were surrounding her, all of her friends prior to being married to Tom had been cut out of her life. She was starting to get more limited contact with her parents who are very important to her. And because she's not stupid, she's actually a, she's brilliant across the board. Don't get me wrong. Um,
she realized what was happening and saw how David and other people were starting to talk about her daughter. Now, because she hadn't been in Scientology before, I'm positive that, you know, she'd heard weird shit about Scientology. Everybody in Hollywood heard, is here weird shit. And, you know, little weird rumors and stuff, right? But Tom handled her on all those things and she was handled. And so everything was fine until they all started coming true, right? And in combination with that, her parents were like, this is getting super duper weird because when they were living in New York, Katie had decided that she wanted Surrey to attend a very prestigious Catholic school. Um, she, she went to Catholic school as a girl. Um, and that's what she wanted for Surrey. That started a lot of friction. Like, why aren't you enrolling her in Delphi in Oregon? Why aren't you like, first of all, they live in New York. Why would they fucking want to go to Sheridan, Oregon? I live in Oregon. Sheridan is not New York. Okay. Um, no offense to regular people there in Sheridan. Maybe you guys could get the town council to get the fucking school out. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's Sheridan, Oregon is a tiny, tiny town, y'all. It is not New York. And the schooling there is shite. Okay. So she wanted her daughter to have a real education. I, I respect that. I That's why I live where I live, because the school district is amazing. Okay. Um. So what she saw was people looking at Surrey as reincarnated, elevated status OT and starting to treat a six-year-old like a tiny little idol, like a tiny little goddess, and then starting to put responsibilities and things. And I'm sure Tom wanted to start doing ethics handlings on little Surrey and things like that. And she was like, not today, Thetan, not today. So, yeah, good for her. They didn't really have her under their spell. Elisa, 1704, look at this super chat. Thank you. Thank you for this super chat. Nora, you're extraordinary. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Please know how impressive all your achievements are. We all cherish you. I'm sorry for all the trauma you experienced. I'm happy you have a beautiful wife and family. Thank you for that. That's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy about that too, guys. This is just, uh, I'm getting for clumped again. It's really, um, it's a lot to talk about. It's a lot. Atkins in Texas, just sending love. Thank you for your super chat. Atkin, I appreciate that. Greg, 118, 1118. Became a, a member. Thank you so much. Let me get back to the live here and see if there's uh, any other questions that are going on here. <clears throat> Just going to scroll back up. Oh, I'm going to go backwards here, guys. Martha, do you think Nicole Kidman gave Katie a heads up on the cult? I, oh, I can only hope so. I can only hope that those two beautiful, amazing moms are are like this and helping each other out. And the the surviving Tom, you know, uh, group therapy is going well for them. Because it's a double trauma, guys. It's the trauma from Tom Cruise, which is, I can't even imagine. And then trauma from Scientology. This is like, you know. It's a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> oh, watching from Polsbull, next door to Bainbridge. Great hat. Hope you had a chance to stop here and enjoy our famous Norwegian bakery. I did not. I went to Bainbridge and went to Proper Fish. Best fish tacos I've ever had. Get on over to Proper Fish in Bainbridge if you haven't. And I was there last weekend, this, this last weekend, MJ. Uh, as you know, it was stunningly gorgeous up there in uh, the greater Seattle area. So let me keep scrolling here. <laughs> yes, I do have, thank you, Heather, for reminding everybody. I do have merch. It's at the ononora.com. You can go, you can uh, check it out and um, partake if you want. 
Let's see here. Oh, question from the Nana Boss audits. Hey, Nana. Thank you for being a member. Um, <clears throat> I remember seeing the National Enquirer that at some point Katie was being held against her will at gold. Hmm. I don't know about that. Only because I, I, it, it could have happened. Um, you know, she could have been getting some intensive auditing up there, but I don't know uh, if that happened or not. I cannot confirm or deny that rumor. I'd have to talk to my friends who were at gold during that time period to see what's up with that. I'll, I'll have to check that out. Question from RSM. Rumor says she was pregnant and married to him for cover for them both. Coincided with the Batman movie she had coming out. I don't, Katie's not gay. So I don't know what cover she would need. Um, are you in, you're trying to say Tom Tom is gay? I mean, I listen, a lot of people have said that. I have a friend who works in the in the Hollywoods um, there who basically told me that's an open secret that he's uh, on the low low. So, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. He seems, I mean, he definitely has a female type. That's for sure. Um, if you look at all the women he's dated, he likes the willowy, you know, very thin, be I mean, stunningly beautiful woman. He's never been with a grody woman. Um, but yeah. You know, all these women are, are are gorgeous. There's no no shade. Um, question from Smooth Steve. Thank you for being a member. Wasn't Katie stalked while she was in New York uh, City by private Scientology goons? Yes. And she was also assigned her own Scientology goon, Jessica Feshback, who was her friend. That was her, her job in the Sea Org, was to be Katie Holmes's friend. That's what you got paid $47 a week to do. Yeah. Yeah. Completely ridiculed -ockle. Just checking here. <clears throat> There's any other questions? Thank you guys for all the love in the chat, too. I really appreciate that. I was having a little bit of a time there. Um, yeah. But that's all right. Yes, Purple Groovy 69. Thank you for being a member. One day Tom will be alone and regret not being there for Surrey. He will regret the birthdays and holidays missed. He will regret it all when it's too late. You know, I, I think that when people get close to death, they start, you know, like reviewing their life. I have a this is this is your life moment just constantly and and try to think about all the things they should have, should have, would have, could have. I mean, Tom's not dying or anything like that. I'm not starting that rumor. But I, that's why I say I, I sincerely hope, and it is a hope, that Tom breaks away from the grip that Scientology has on him and, and seeks out real mental health help. And through whatever process, which I'm not a part of and have no authority over, um, reconnects with his daughter, Suri. Um, and that all of her siblings would, you know, uh, get re reunited together and that they could somehow eke out uh, being a family, the three of them, you know, and um, that's, that's my hope because as cuckoo as Tom is, he's still these guys' father. And if you're alive and you're a parent no matter what you've done, no matter what you fucked up, you've got to make an effort to change and to be a better person and to be there for your kids. That's just, you know, it's not going to be easy, but you got to do it. You got to do it. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Oh, Greg, 1118. I'm so fortunate 
to have mended my relationship with my parents. I literally live beside them because they're in their late sixties. So I'm there if they need me, but it took time. See, it can happen. Thank you for sharing that, Greg. That gives me great hope. You know, it gives me, it gives me hope that that could happen. Um, Rachel D., uh, when you think about all the planning, Katie's amazing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we did that. I did that one already. Okay. Let's see here. Now I'm back to the present. Just seeing if there's any more questions here, guys. Oh, Better for having visited this place says, comment, if you think about Jenna's early years, then Surrey would have been treated the same. Yeah, it was it, it, because she's the daughter of Tom Cruise. I mean, in Scientology, there's David Miscavige and there's Tom Cruise. So, yeah, it had been really bad. And if you don't understand what that comment means, please go read Jenna Miscavige's book. Okay. Do I have it here on my shelf? I think I do. I have Jenna's book somewhere. Maybe it's downstairs on my other bookshelf. This is my small bookshelf, guys. But, yeah, I think it's downstairs on my other one. Yes, but please, please pick up a copy of Jenna's book. Let me, let me, let me pull up the link here for you guys. Beyond Belief by Jenna Miscavige Hill. Wow, somebody's selling it for 60 bucks. I mean, <laughs> there, well, Jenna, Jenna just got popular again. So that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. Um, you know. You can get it here at Amazon's. Okay, I'll put the link in the chat to share these. There we go. Copied it. But yeah, please, please get Jenna's book. Okay. And we're going to paste that and pop it go go get that it's a great um it's a great read and it'll give you some more insight on what it's like <laughs> growing up inside the uh, international ranch all right question do you think they used any fair game tactics on katie post-divorce i think they tried to but Hollywood is a strange place. Um, and she's too talented to keep down. So it wouldn't have benefited them to come after her um, too hard because it would reflect back on Tom. So ultimately, I don't think they tried too hard, you know. Yadira, thank you. I, I, thank you. Word scrambling and the Yiddish. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I'm a little bit of everything. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's go here. Thank you, CJ Never in Avatar for becoming a member. Thank you. Elisa 1704 became a member. Thank you for that. Okay, let's see here. Katie was OT7, correct? So she would have gone through handlings or whatever and known that kids were subject to the same types of disgusting questions. That would be sufficient, I would think. Well, also, let's be honest, and let's look at the time period there. She got into Scientology 2005 and left in 2012. That's a six-year time period. Sorry, it was six. Who's auditing her? Who were the best auditors on the planet? Children. Children. She was being audited by kids, guys. She knew what was going to happen to Surrey. 
She sat across from those people who were psychologically terrorizing her. And she was like, not today, Thetan. That's not going to be my kid. Let's see here. Um, I don't know if she was OT7 or not, but I guarantee you all of her auditing was from kids, Martha Simmons. Uh, Nicole was on was OT3. That is correct. I don't know what OT level Katie may or may not have gotten to. You have to understand that the amount of years it takes to get to a certain level is really about how much money you can pay up front. Both of them had millions of dollars. So, it's, you know, that wasn't a problem for them. <clears throat> uh magic mike from clearwater uh what happens if you make noise during the delivery do they make you start over <laughs> flunk for noise start the birth over you oh, start no um what what the belief is is that if you make noise during childbirth because it's already a traumatic event birth in scientology traumatic events are called engrams um, meaning that that incident is like recorded in your reactive mind, right? So that it will give effects to you, um, unconscious effects to you later on if words or phrases or things are happening. So if during the birth, as the mom, if you're like, Fuck, this hurts, goddamn piece of shit, motherfucker, I can't, you're tearing my... Hoo hoo up, right? That those words are going to be recorded. That's not what I said during birth, but anyway, um, those words are going to be recorded in the subconscious mind of the baby. And so, if if they get a pain in their hoo hoo later, um, they're going to hear that. Or if they if their mom gets mad, that tone of their mom is going to re-stimulate reactivate trigger that incident and make them uh you know they could they could pop, that's that's what would be attributed to like if they have hoo-hoo problems right is because their mom said this during uh birth right and, and weird stuff like that so yeah basically it's all your mom's fault uh question from francesca how high on the bridge did katie go i don't know i don't know so put your speculations in here. Uh, question from Windy City Thetan Watch. Hey, uh, is Tom Cruise close enough to reality that he will have a deathbed conscience? Well, he's still a human being, guys. So I think so. I think that when he reaches his deathbed, um, you know, he's he's a human. Unless he's in a vegetative state already, you know. That should be just the normal stuff for him, right? Um, let's see here. Airdrie says, I'm Tom's age. You do start thinking things like, is this our last puppy? Will one of my older sisters get sick? Does my child understand how much I love him? Yeah. There's certain points in your life where you start reflecting on all these things, you know, and that's, um, yeah. Yeah. It's very true. All right. Anna Jensaki. Thank you for being a member. And not Anna. Question. Did you ever go for your dream job other than being a super mom? No. No. I never uh, pursued broadcasting. Uh, never went to college. Well, I did a little bit of college. Um, so, no. No. I'd still love to, uh, you know, to get into that. That would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, Pink Ladybug. Do you think Scientology PIs have been in the paparazzi that follows her and Surrey around? Or would Osa just be real, using real to keep an eye on them? Um, 
that's possible. They do. Scientology has a huge connection to TMZ. Um, and the, the guy who runs TMZ and stuff. So they, they give the TMZ like their version and I'm sure they donate, you know, and pay for shit. So yeah, it could be that the paparazzis are, you know, have an Osa guy in there. Rachel D. If David Miscavige passed away, would that possibly change things for Tom? Maybe the hold wouldn't be as strong. No. Um, because uh, little known tid tidbit here about Tom Cruise. Um, he became such a hardcore Scientologist that he wanted to join the Sea Org. Okay. It, it, it's not, this is truth. And he had to be talked off a ledge by the entire uh, Celebrity Center president's office and David Miscavige himself, who told him, Tom, you are the most powerful OT on the planet. We're, we acknowledge that. Why do you think you got the Flavor Flav medal? But we need you to continue being Tom Cruise in the world because that is how you're going to reach the most people. That's your mission. So they gave him the Flavor Flav medal and everybody that he encounters in Scientology has to salute him and call him sir so that he can feel like he's a part of the Sea Org. So if David Miscavige died today, I'm sure he would like go to the go to the end base and be like, well, he came to me in a vision in one of my sessions, and I am now the captain and would just fucking wear his clothes because they're the same height. So yeah. You know, that's that's how that would go. Let's see here. Thank you, Duchess Diana. Thank you for being a member. I had to plan my own escape from a small cult, and it's no small thing. No, this was an enormous operation um, that, uh, you know, Katie had to do, right? That was enormous. It's it's not nothing. And, and congrats to you. I hope that you're uh, loving regular life, and if you need anything, let me know. Let me know. Um, just scrolling down. Doo, doo, doo. You guys have been amazing. Oh, my goodness. Nancy, sit again. Gifted 10 memberships. Get out of the town. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's see here. Aki, given that we now know the absolute horrors of what really happened happens in this cult, do you think it's selfish to only take your own and run and not try to use your influence to help others? Hmm. Well, in the case of Katie and, and Surrey, right? We have to rewind the clock. It was 2012. This is 12 years ago. Um, there wouldn't have been an opportunity for Katie to like, you know, recruit other people. Come with me if you want to live, you know. Um, that being said, anybody who's willingly going into a church of Scientology right now, uh, without doing their research first, I don't know what to tell you. But also when you're in a cult, the only person who can get you to leave is you. You have to stand up and use your two feetsies and, and walk you out there. Sashay away. Sashay away. Um, because that's how it starts, right? You have to remove yourself from that environment. And then you can start deconstructing it then you can start healing from it, right? It is a, it is a fucking long process. I, guys, I'm still in the middle of it. I am doing a lot of therapy right now, which is allowing me to create more content, but also, you know, what 
stirring up a lot of stuff for me because that's what therapy does. You, you dive into the trauma, you swim through it, <laughs> and then you come up for some air, and then you you go back under. <laughs> Until you kind of like clean the pool of the trauma here. And um, you could do a couple laps, you know, and you feel a little bit better. You feel a bit better about your swimming technique. Um, yeah. I'm treading water, though. That's the good news. I'm not drowning. Uh, I'm treading water. So I don't know. I mean, people really have to want to leave. If there are people, guys, again, to everybody watching now, um, if there are any lurkers out there, okay, that need help leaving, that want to leave, that feel like there's no, I, I, how am I going to pay for all this? What am I going to do? How will I get a job? All of those questions, please go to sptvfoundation.org.org. Okay. We're going to put that in the chat here. Okay. Um, and they will help you out. Okay, they will help you out because that is what they're there for. That is what they're there for. Okay, give them a call, give them an email, send a carrier pigeon, however you want to contact them. Please contact them. Let me pull it up here on oh, my screen. There we go. Oh, my wife is home with my pokey. I'm so excited. There we go. There we go. Let's share these that. Boom. And here we go. SPTV Foundation. All right. So give them a ring a dingy. Okay. Uh, if you go to the get help button here, see, let's just read what it says here. Looking for some help. We got you. Do you need help leaving Scientology? Are you an ex Scientologist who's been slogging it out after leaving, but needs the kind of helping hand and support you never got growing up? We are here for you. Please know that it is our goal to help everyone. If there isn't enough to go around, we will prioritize someone who is homeless over someone who has a little more support in their lives. However, we offer many forms of support that go beyond funds, and we strongly encourage people to reapply. Absolutely everything in the application below is kept confidential and will never be shared. We understand how hard it can be to ask for help, so please forgive the many questions. Due to Scientology Fair Games tactics, we have to be a little cautious. So you fill out your info. Are you currently employed? Give that info. And then what's up? When did you leave? What's going on? You know, uh, and uh, what are you now? What kind of aid are you looking for? Like, they just want to know a little bit about you. What What was your story? Morning, Glory. Is there somebody you know who can vouch for your current situation? It might even be one of the SPTV creators. Put me in there, coach. Is there anything else you would like us to know? Whatever you want to say there. And then boom apply. Okay. Or you can just contact the SPTV foundation at contact at the SPTV foundation.org or call their number. Let's, let's get that in the chat. 727-266-5797. And if you want to volunteer, we got an email for that volunteer at the SPTV foundation.org. So guys hit them up. I'm going to put that number in the chat here right now. Okay. And uh, please, please, please reach out, reach out and, um, and touch someone and, and, and get that going for yourself. If you need that support, it's there. Question. Do you think that if males gave birth, the sign birthing wouldn't be a thing in the church of Scientology? <laughs> There'd be an exception to the rule. Picturing LRH now. Um, <clears throat> I think if men had to give birth um, through their Panos, there would be a lot of things that would be different now. Uh, I love many. A lot of things would be different now. I can tell you that. <clears throat> Question. 
If they think all humans are damaged with thetans, what do they think of dogs and other creatures? That's covered on another dynamic. Um, you know, they're just like a lesser beings. They don't give two shits, right? Because you have the fourth dynamic, that's, uh, well, your first dynamic, that's you. Second dynamic, that's the sex dynamic, right? And the family, okay? That's your partner. And then the kids you create and your 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 family. Third dynamic is groups you choose, okay? So this is a group, SPTV. Being my member, that's a group. Uh, your, you know, your racquetball club, your, your work, those are all groups. Fourth dynamic is all mankind. Fifth dynamic, plants and animals, it's a whole thing. They put the plants and the animals together. Check. Sixth dynamic is mist. The physical things. This hat, my t-shirt, this necklace. Anything that is an inanimate object. It is made up of matter, energy, space, and time. Just facts, not atoms. Okay? And then the seventh dynamic is you as a spiritual being. That is the Thetan dynamic. Then you have the eighth dynamic, that is the infinity or God dynamic. And nobody gives a fuck about a God dynamic. It's, they don't believe in God. Really, they only care about the fourth dynamic. That's all mankind. And your third dynamic, which is you better fucking be in Scientology. That's it. Don't care about yourself and don't definitely don't care about your family. Fuck those twats. So, yeah. Uh, Elisa 1704, thank you for being a member. Question, Serge is upset with Nicole came in for leaving the children. Do I feel that way? No. She didn't have a choice. She fought it as hard as she could at the time. Um, she escaped in a different way. And I think ultimately because I think Nicole is the love of his life. And I think she believed him when he said that your relationship to the kids wasn't going to change. Little did she know that everyone inside the church was waging a secret silent war against her to make her persona non grata to her children and to the entire church of Scientology because they had to win him back. So it was a war internally at that time to get Tom Cruise back on the rails, get him back in the church because she almost got him out of Scientology guys. Nicole Kidman almost got Tom Cruise out of Scientology. And then Scientology and Marty Rathbun came back and grabbed him back. There's one thing Marty Rathbun should apologize for in this whole world is the campaign of terror that he waged on that woman. Absolutely. The Holy Rogue. I see Tom Cruise as he was in the film Magnolia, stuck with the reporter and forced to face his guilt. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Duchess Diana. I'm doing it now, broadcasting, and exceptionally well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have thought about starting a whole other channel that's just sports. Uh, and uh, that would um, that would be pretty awesome. Oh, questions here. Question. Do you think Scientology will lessen its fair game practices due to all this exposure? Absolutely not. Guys, guys, I have more trolls assigned to me now than ever in my entire life. Why? Because I'm, I'm spilling the beans. Um, so they're going to call it something else, just like they got rid of the RPF and they don't call it the RPF, but they're still doing it. They're still doing it. They don't have anything else they can do except for roll over and die. So yeah. Um, KCOB, how long do you think it will take the church of Scientology to lose their tax exemption? That is the, you know, that's the key question, Casey. That's the key question. Um, I hope soon, but the IRS has to grow a pair and tell them no more soup for you. That's, that's what has to happen because the only reason they got the tax exemption is because they harassed the shit out of the IRS in 1993 and blackmailed several IRS agents, including the director into submission. And they celebrated that. You can go watch it on the internets. 
Just look up 1993 David Miscavige event and you'll see it. He lays it out what they did in with the words out of his face hole. And they still have the tax exemption. Purple Groovy 69 with Rosemary uh, being an exception to the rule. At what age do you think there's no deprogramming a senior citizen in Scientology? Hmm. I don't know if it so much has to do with the age of the person. Because deprogramming is very individual. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's like pant size. You know? You got to find the, the pants that fit your waist um, and your inseam and, and the tush. Uh, you know, like perfectly. And, and sometimes that takes trying on a lot of different pairs of pants. Um, some people may never get deprogrammed you know, because they're old and senile and now um, their brain is too fragile to do anything, right? So it really just depends on the state, the physical state of the person and their willingness to try and the person executing its patience, um, you know, because look at Betty White. I mean, she died at 99 and she was like, sharp as a tack, right? Um, other people reach their seventies and dementia has set in. So it, it, it's a, it's a crapshoot. It really depends on, on the person, you know, but I wouldn't put an age limit on it. Certainly not. Um, Melissa rib. I'm going to just go with rib. Um, became a member. Thank you for becoming a member. Oh, another question. I'm skipping, but I saw this question too. Uh, Enola Ravenmare. Thank you for becoming a member. So Jenna Elfman ditching acting means that they don't believe in her draw as an actress to the cult. Bit of a backhanded insult there by the cult. Yeah. Yeah. She also, who's hiring her? She's not a good actress. So yeah, no, no, she is. She's dedicated like Tom. Just 24-7, pumping out propaganda, showing up to MC stuff. Um, do you think some of the OGs who are out because they didn't like David Miscavige would go back when he's gone? No. There's a few people. I can't say no across the board, Asen. Um, there's, a, there's a small contingency out here of independent Scientology. Okay? I don't understand these guys. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, they left because they felt like Elrond's words were being squirreled, were being misused, and that the technology of Scientology, 100% workable. And they are practicing it in their mind standardly. And so everything is, everything's wonderful. Uh, they are not deprogrammed from Scientology. So if David Miscavige was removed and somebody they liked got put in a position of power, absolutely, they would march right back into an org and hand over their wallets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, everybody who's an OG who left, absolutely not. Like, Tor is Tori Magoo going back? Is Hannah going back? Is Spanky going back? Is Jesse going back? No, 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 and no. Okay? Like, you know. So, it, just the independent Scientologists would do that if there was, like, new management kind of a thing. Um, Didn't Katie have a lot of logistical help from her dad? And I'm sure a small team working behind the scenes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, George. Yes. Mary Reno, question. If Tom had joined the Sea Org, would he have been able to continue his career somehow? No. No, you can't do both. That's why they told him you can't do it. But they make him believe that he's just important. Important, I put that in air quotes, as um, Sea Org members in his mind so that he can... Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. This is also true. Jenna Elfin wanted to join the Sea Org, but it was told that it was better for the Church of Scientology if she succeeded as an actress. Yes, because there's more reach. Let's face it. I was a Sea Org member. As a Sea Org member, I was reaching exactly 0 0.00000 new people with my influence. Okay. I'm reaching a lot of people now. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, I have almost a million views. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, you, you can't have that <laughs> kind of influence and bring people in, uh, when you're a CIRG member, that's just, uh, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Let's see here. Question. I know there's a lot about the kids. What about the elderly? I feel I feel the same way on this, Jim. Um, my favorite senior of all time, Wendy Oshida, is I think still at Celebrity Center. Um, if I could go talk to her, I absolutely I I love her. I miss her. Um, I considered her a great friend, and she is well. She's got to be at least seventy now maybe in her late sixties. Um, she's never had children. Her parents are long gone. Um, she has no one outside of the Scientology. Many people in the C organization, uh, now are like that because once the child ban went in, in 1995, oh, sorry, 96, was it 96 or 97? Anyway, maybe I think 96 when I explained it the other day. Um, that was it. No more. You can't have a baby and, and continue to be a sewer member. You have to leave. Right. Or, you know, 10 times out of 10, you're forced to go down the street to the Planned Parenthood and take care of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rosemary's proof that, uh, people who become less physically able in their older years are not treated well. Um, they're not taken care of. There's no retirement plan. There's no retirement home. They don't have insurance. Um, you know, last I heard, Heber Gents was in a hospice, you know, as an example. So, uh, yeah, I, I I want all those people out and for them to get the help that they need to be human beings and especially the elderly to not have to work a 10-hour day every day. Um Let's see here. Heather, if you have to go, you can go. It's okay. I'll be all right. Um, Chili Willy, what do you think about the foundation holding an auction from the SPTV people to raise money for the foundation? I would be down for it. I'd be down for it. 100%. It's all good. It's all good. I am so sorry to hear this, Melissa. That is um, too much for a 12-year-old to take on. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I, I know what you mean. I'm, yeah. And my, my heart goes out to you. I don't, I'm so sorry for that. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Uh, I support the movement immensely, but I struggle to support certain behaviors from both sides in this community. As someone who has copied a cult myself, I struggle with the drama. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. A lot of people comment on that, Austin. Um, but let me just say this. The reason why, and this is just for me, okay? This is, I'm not speaking for everything that goes on out here in the wild, wild west of the internet. For me personally, when I'm doing a video like the video I did two days ago about Mitch Brisker, um, I don't consider that drama. I consider that a, a necessary correction midstream to make sure that when we're talking about stuff, and by we, I mean the royal we, okay, 
um, you know, people who I personally know and stuff like that. Me, Aaron, Serge, Natalie, Liz and Liz, and, you know, people born into Scientology, Jenna, um, Mike Brown, you know, all these guys. Okay. I, I'm leaving so many people out, but <clears throat> those are just people off the top of my head. When we are discussing Scientology and what needs to happen right now and what's still happening right now that happened to us as children and is continuing to occur where we're talking about, uh, you know, child, you know, trafficking, okay, the little shell game with the kids and foreigners and elderly, okay, it's, it's a human trafficking problem, okay, um, and they are allowed to continue to do this under the guise of, of being a religion with a 501c3 exemption. I have to make sure that, you know, if other people are going to pop on the scene to try and be like, well, I also was in Scientology and I talked to David Miscavige every day and he is a nice guy. And you make fun of people protesting kids in Scientology on a, on a public platform. And continue to try and lessen what's really going on, uh, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clap back at that. I'm gonna clap back because we are, for the first time, making real inroads into the Scientological uh, psyche and Scientology's uh, overall business model because. They can't stop it. All the protests that are, are you know, uh, popping up organically on their own, headed majorly by people who have never been in Scientology, They this is something they could have never predicted. Me speaking out on the internet, I'm sure they predicted that. I'm sure that, you know, they know Stradamus their way and be like, Nora's going to be trouble. You know, like, okay, sure. but. All of these other people in every city that they have a, in Oregon, never in their mind did they think that the public opinion would not be that I'm an insane person and that, you know, all these other things, whatever they want to paint me as, right? You know, now they have people popping up to say I'm deranged and I'm a bad mother and like all these, like, like you don't even fucking know me. You haven't known me for 22 years, Scientology, okay, since I escaped with my life by drinking bleach and getting kicked out, okay? So you don't know me. You never did. Um, so it's not drama. I, I hate that. It's not drama. It's not um, anything but truth. Uh, and there's certain people that have to be held accountable, like Mike Rinder. He's got to be held accountable for his actions and for things that he's continuing to do in real life to other, you know, ex-Scientologists that are exactly from the playbook that he wrote when he was the head of OSA. I didn't tell him to do that. I'm just saying what's happening. That's not drama. That's just truth. When Mitch Brisker goes on another content, you know, creator's page or however, you know, uh, thing and starts mocking childhood trauma. I I'm going to say something about that. Okay. Because that's a man who literally sat at the lunchroom table with the big leader. And the only reason he left Scientology guys is they wouldn't pay him more money. That's not a thumbs up Apple. They wouldn't pay him. I want you to all, this is from his own admission. He got paid $8 million to make trash, to indoctrinate people, okay, and into psychologically terrorizing themselves and others. But it wasn't enough money for him. So now he's going to bitch about it and the people he worked with and just toss aside that a 14-year-old audited him like, you know, as if that's just normal. And then try and gaslight everybody and say there's no more kids in Scientology. Not going to stand for that, especially not from him, not from a guy who got to leave every night and go to his comfy fucking house 
with his nice bed and his nice food and his nice shit and made millions of dollars while we starved on beans and rice and cockroach infested overcrowded rooms. So sorry to get heated there. But again, that's just facts. It's not drama if it's real. Dra you want drama? Go watch Vanderpump Rules. That's drama. That's manufactured reality show drama. Okay? This isn't like a tiff that I have with these people. They are exercising Scientology in real life right now. They have not left. If you're still doing things that are Scientological, you have not left. Get some therapy to all those people. All right. <laughs> Crazy John T. There is no mess, only Zool. Yes, I agree. I agree. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you for being here, wielding that wrench. I appreciate. Um, let's scroll down. Oh, suggestion. Sports night with you. Sports. With me, Sterling, Dylan, and others that are big sports fans. Ooh, I like. Let's do it. Christian with the C. I like it. I will um, uh, run that by them. That could be fun. Let's see here. Well, thank you for that, Lori. Lori, Lori. Um, I'm dangerous because I'm smart, informed, ex scientologist Yes, this is very true. This is very true. Uh, Lorianne, Leah Remini had opened my eyes about the religion. That show should come back. I think she was threatened a lot. She said while she had her comedy show, they wanted her to get other actors to join. Yeah. Yeah. She was meant to recruit a lot of people and she didn't because that's not her style. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, you know, uh, the aftermath show uh, and uh, Jamie Mustard said it best. Um, that show put Scientology and its practices into the zeitgeist, right? And, and and by that, it made it easier for people like me to discuss it in, in a regular way without us being looked at like circus sideshow freaks, right? Because it did such a good job of informing the public at large about the horrors of Scientology. So yeah, is is a fantastic show, no doubt, no doubt. Oh, oh, sushi pool. It's not exactly the same, but I joined a circus in 1989 and met my husband there. My family was horrified. The only thing that made me leave, um, after I left, my husband followed. Okay. Oh, the only thing that made you leave was you. Exactly. Exactly. Any high control group, the only way you get out is you decide to get out. It's like getting off of drugs, guys. If you say, I'm not going to do, you know, like I'm quitting Coca-Cola. So then you have to like stop drinking Coca-Cola. You have to start doing that. That's the only, it's the first step. And then there's a lot of many other steps after that. But yeah, good job. I, I, I'm now I'm so curious um, of what you're, what you did in the circus. This is absolutely fascinating. Um, from SPTV supporter, how can we get more information on the Sea Org members that were once high up on the food chain that all ended up in the hole? Where are they all now? Yeah. Where is Heber Gents? Where is, uh, you know, Guillaume Lusev? Where is, um, I'm gonna have to get a, a list of them. There's Guillaume, Heber, uh, Sandy and Greg Wilhair. Um, uh, there's so many people and they're just all missing in action. You have, you, you don't have the president of the church of Scientology on post. You don't have the executive director international on post. You don't have the senior CS international on post. How are you doing anything? Yeah. Insanity. Question a little off topic, but have you thought about LGBTQIA specific foundation to support anyone in that community leaving Scientology? Pink ladybug. Um, well, the SPTV foundation supports everybody under the rainbow and everything. Um, so that's, that's guaranteed. I mean, Serge, Serge Delmar is on the board. 
And uh, in case you didn't know, he's super gay. So, um, you know, uh, we don't have a specific separate gay rainbow foundation. Um, but I definitely can tell you, it, it doesn't matter what stripe of the rainbow flag you are, you're going to get support. Um, but I will talk to them about like putting out some more like, you know, LGBTQIA plus friendly material so that we can get the word out. Cause I think that's, um, I, I think that's a good point. You know, I want everybody to feel loved and included and, um, supported by that for sure. For sure. Okay. Different topic comic from pause for Andrea. Just saw my newsfeed. There's a fire at the Timberline Lodge. Oh no. Where they filmed the shining. Oh shit. I hope they get that out. That's awful. Oh, my wife. Oh, Andrea. My wife says it's okay. It was last night. And that they they saved it. There's it's damaged, but it's gonna stand. They they can fix it. All right. Breaking news there. Smooth seed. Uh, SPTV and NYC would would be less drama if we didn't know how the cult actively tries to damage the protest movement. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And how some former members still have the claws of DM in their backs. That I'm going to give that a this so that we can get the proper thing from Apple here. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for that. What is Brenda saying here? Brenda, Surge is always thinking first about the kids still in and needing help. Yes. And it's true that more former famous Scientologists who could speak out now would aid the cause. That's always his motive. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about it. Laura Prepon, where's your fucking, how come you're not speaking out? How come you're not speaking out? Jason, uh, oh, what's his name? He's a skateboarder guy. Jason Lee, where are you? We had, uh, you know, Jason Begay for a hot second. And then he was like, I'm fucking done talking about Scientology. Uh, who else is left that would be really big to talk out? I mean, we could pull Mimi Rogers back out. She could tell us all about it. She's the one that got Tom Cruise in. Nicole Kidman, now's your time to shine. Katie, let's, let's lay it all out there. You know, these guys were all in at a very elite level and they need to start saying some shit. I agree. I agree. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Uh, who else? Who else is famous and left? Well, there's a lot of people you guys don't know that were like in Scientology for like three seconds. And I don't want to out them because they haven't outed themselves as like, Oh, I, I dipped in and I dipped out. Cause that's not what I'm here to do guys. I'm not here to give you the hot goss on who I saw in the cafe. Um, but there's plenty of people out there in Hollywood. I'm looking at you, a couple people and, um, you guys been done in it and you dipped out. Like, let's, let's start cranking up the volume on that. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Let your freak flag fly and throw some support to the SPTV foundation and to these protesters who are doing, uh, the Lord's work here. Okay. Because you guys testifying uh, could, could really help out, could really help out. Oh, ba -ba. Nora, I love your language. I love your Nora language. Esca escape. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Vabombs. Thank you. Let's see here. <laughs> That kitchen with Suzanne. Thank you. Speaking back is not drama, and we should not be telling trauma survivors that they are being dramatic. Thank you. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. Every time I think I'm at the bottom, guys, you can just keep commenting, and I love it. Let's see here. Just making sure I didn't miss anybody else's questions. From creepy old lady. 
Have you considered broadening your content to include non scientist subjects? You're really good at explaining complex things in simple forms and you have a great voice. I don't, you know, maybe I'll just do it here on this channel. Maybe I won't start a whole other channel. Um, that is something to noodle. I will think about that. That would be fun too. Let's see here. Oh my goodness. Crazy uh, Reiki lady became a matter. Well, thank you so much for that. Let's keep scrolling. I made it. All right, guys. This has been another amazing live. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a member. Um, you know, thank you for tuning in. My website is ononora.com. Um, that was the first time I've heard an American say shite, and it was great. Yes, you're welcome. Um and, uh, oh my God, listen, if Saturday night live called me, I please go. I'm going to, I have to pull it up. Please. I, I have to find this thing. If you guys want to understand what my reaction to being contacted by SNL would be. Um, oh, what am I doing? It's in my, it's in my, please stop. Trust. There we go. This is giving me such guff right now. You guys, I'm going to show this to you because it is one of the singular greatest things. This would be my reaction to being contacted by SNL. Okay, we're going to pull this up here one, one moment. Why won't it let me drag it down? I'm just going to, okay, there we go. Now I can drag it up. Now I'm going to share this here, just so you guys can see. We're going to end on Jennifer Garner here. Is this Jen? Yeah. This is Judy Andrews, Jen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I want to tell you, I'm a huge fan and love what you do. And, and Katie was just telling me that, that you were pretty uh, admiring of me too. So I thought, well, let's just have a chat. <laughs> oh my God. How are you? Oh. <laughs> Why haven't I ever met you, Jen? I would love to in one day. Um, I, I, I was at a party once, but I couldn't, I couldn't change, you know, put it into words, and I couldn't, I couldn't possibly be normal. And so I just admire the word. She can't see you, Julie. But, yeah. Jen, am I getting you in the middle of dinner uh, or, yours? or washing up or something like that? Certainly not. Okay. I would pull over and leave my children on the you would talk. And then uh, you have to leave them. Well, you leave. It's Katie here. Oh, okay. 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 So, I, I, so Jennifer is watching the sound of music and so cute. So I wrote on her Instagram page, I'm interviewing Julie Andrews, come with. And she said, don't mess with me, Katie. <laughs> and so, so we planned this, Jen, because we talked to- Now she's having a hot flash, I as I would, <laughs> completely. She wants to just say a quick hi. So ask her a question Talk for a second, and I'm going to see what no, no, no. I, I do. No, I, I do. I know. I know. When, first of all, Mo always in trouble. I didn't even realize she was Mo, Mo works my assistant. But who else? She's sweating now. 
you know what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a She does the same thing that I do, guys. She just keeps talking when she gets really excited. See, she realized she's talking too much. She has to hold her mouth closed, guys. That would be also be me. Publication. It is a. It is in our house. We talk about those characters and Mandy and the Dutch. And the, you know, but especially Mandy and Last of Willie, really great Wayne Doodle. No, we, we speak about them like they're family friends. Well, what I and do my kids. Julie can't even talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> my kids that, that you wrote those is so wonderful because it helps them see that you can really be a full person that just because you're a performer it doesn't mean that you that that's all you do they you know they love knowing that that, that um my fair lady and that um mary pop that all of them are the same person playing someone else and also is an author well thank so you thank what you. a great great compliment and uh, it's just so lovely and i think it means more odd, oddly uh, I don't mean to be disparaging to anybody else, but when somebody says they like one of my books, it really is a thrill because it's, I'm still learning on my feet about writing, but. Uh, Julie Andrews is in her 80s, guys. They, they love my book or it's one of their favorites or something. And I'm here talking to Katie today about this second book of memoir, uh, of memories. And so I, I hope you enjoy that one too for yourself. Not your kids. <laughs> kids now. They're 13, 10, and 7. They're babies, guys. <laughs> you can enjoy well, I, I, want the, I want the two of you to meet and have lunch at some point. That would be because I, and maybe I'll join. <laughs> Do you see? So like, that would be me right now. Yes, yes. Just wait till you see the rest of Jen's reaction here. Um, Jen, I'm going to keep talking to Julie and finish the podcast, but we just wanted to say a quick hello and send you a lot of love. I couldn't be more delighted, honestly, uh, Jen, and I do hope we have a chance for one of these. If you see me anywhere or I see you anywhere, we're going to come up to each other and say Oh, okay. truly, wild horses couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just the two of you together, what a, what a powerhouse room that is. There must be so much fun and wisdom and laughter and all kinds of good stuff. Oh my God. Have the best time. And thank you for including me. Katie, I can't believe you today. Well, well, I'm going to treat surprises, so I wanted to give you this special one. And it's a pity that she's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lots of fun, and we'll see you again for lunch. Okay, I'll see you again. <laughs> I really do hope so much. Thank you. Bye. You suck. <laughs> Okay, so just just to give you a taste, uh, that would be exactly uh, how I was, yeah, if Saturday Night Live wanted me to exist in their universe, that that would be me. That would that would be me. So I love you guys. I will see you on the flippity dippity. All right. Have a good one.